Has anyone ever told you that you should eat less salt? What does that mean? How much is less? Recommendations from the Dietary Guidelines for Americans is to eat 2,300 milligrams or less daily of sodium to have a healthy meal plan. Wow, that sounds like a lot, right? Well, the average American consumes close to 4,000 milligrams of sodium daily. Did you know that one teaspoon of salt equals 2,300 milligrams of sodium? So it's likely that if you add salt to your food, you're eating more than the recommended amount per day. Too much sodium can put us at risk for high blood pressure, heart disease, and stroke. We know that salt has sodium, but what else? Other foods that are high in sodium include processed foods, especially processed meats, frozen pizza, canned soups or entrees, breads, cheese, sauces, and restaurant food, just to name a few. Although there is hidden salt in foods and beverages that we haven't considered. Do you know there is sodium in the diet soft drink you are enjoying three times per day? And what about the sports drink you're drinking? These are things to think about because everything you eat and drink in the day adds up. Condiments can add sodium as well. Let's look at an example of this. When ordering a hamburger and adding toppings, consider the following information. One slice of American cheese contains 468 milligrams of sodium. A tablespoon of barbecue sauce is 175 milligrams. A tablespoon of yellow mustard is 171 milligrams of sodium. A tablespoon of ketchup is 154 milligrams of sodium. And one pickle slice is 85 milligrams of sodium. There is virtually no sodium in tomato, onion, or lettuce. To make a healthier choice, avoid adding cheese when ordering a hamburger at a restaurant and try to load up on as many vegetables as you can. If you like a sauce on your hamburger, try to limit it to one sauce and limit it to one tablespoon if possible. We can start making changes by adding more potassium to our diet. Did you know foods like fresh fruits and vegetables can be a very valuable tool to help naturally rid our body of excess sodium? First off, anything that contains the word salt or sodium you shouldn't use if possible. Some people use garlic salt and think that is fine, or that sea salt is a better choice, when the truth is that all of these options have the same amount of sodium in them as regular table salt. This is the time to get creative with herbs, fresh or dried. And you could use one of the Mrs. Dash blends. There are many varieties of these now. Planning ahead for eating out may mean eating very low sodium meals for the other two meals you eat in the day. When you order your meal, try to order a piece of meat that will be placed on the grill. Stay away from things that are fried and deep fried as they often have breading and contain more sodium. You can also request that they do not add salt to the protein that they cook for you. Sometimes when ordering cooked vegetables, you can ask them to not add anything to them while cooking. No salt and no butter. Steamed is best when able to. A small baked or sweet potato is a good choice to go with the meal, but pay close attention to what you add to the potato because it can quickly add up. Again, request no added salt to any of your foods. If the restaurant brings bread to the table before the meal, remember this could have several hundred milligrams of salt in one roll. Instead, ask if they can bring out veggies like carrots and celery to eat, or just wait until your meal comes to save the sodium for it. Here's an example of a meal plan that follows the 2300 milligram plan. Day one, for breakfast, have three quarter cup of berries, six ounces of vanilla Greek yogurt, and one ounce of unsalted almonds, about 24 almonds. For lunch, have a packet of tuna with a tablespoon of mayonnaise, two slices of whole wheat bread, half a cup of baby carrots, two tablespoons of ranch dressing, and a cup of pineapple. Dinner, have a six ounce grilled chicken breast, 10 grilled asparagus spears with Parmesan cheese and ground black pepper, a small sweet potato about the size of a computer mouse, with a tablespoon of light butter and a teaspoon of cinnamon. And for a snack during the day, enjoy a sugar-free pudding cup and a tablespoon of sunflower seeds. All of that would add up to about 1,650 milligrams of sodium. Day two, breakfast can be two eggs, English muffin, a tablespoon of light butter, and a tablespoon of low sugar jelly. Lunch, a Wendy's single hamburger and a fruit cup. For dinner, have a four ounce piece of grilled salmon, steamed broccoli and carrots, and a cup of wild rice made with olive oil, garlic powder, and some Mrs. Dash seasoning. For a midday snack, for a midday snack, have six Triscuit crackers and an ounce of cheddar cheese. All of this would add up to 1,850 milligrams of sodium for the day. Low calorie definitely doesn't mean low sodium. In fact, oftentimes, when things have less fat or calories, they add more sodium to make up for the flavor. 
Really look at labels on dressings and try to avoid pre-cooked meats like grilled chicken as they often use sodium to flavor. How to make it easier? Try preparing grilled chicken or cooked lean meat from fresh or frozen in bulk at the start of the work week. The night before your workday, portion out your protein, vegetables, and a starch, such as beans, potatoes, or rice, into a container for the workday. Gives you a healthy meal that was quick and easy. Using frozen bags of vegetables is easy and fresher sometimes than fresh vegetables in the produce section. The goal is to steam them and eat them as they are without adding salt. If you have questions about a low-sodium diet plan, contact your certified diabetes educator.